Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Farrakhan, a product designer working in London. In this video, I'm going to talk through my design to development handoff process, the process that I enjoyed the most and the process I feel like that works the best at my time at Ford. Every team has a different design to development handoff process, but I'm going to walk through mine that inside Figma that I feel like that worked really well and uh, it was pretty streamlined and it got the best results. So if you're new here, be sure to subscribe for future design related videos and let's get started. So when it comes to design and development slash engineering handoff, one thing I like to say is there's no such thing as a one size fits all solution. So every company, every team has a solution that works for them and it's about having a bespoke solution and taking inspiration from different processes. So this is a solution that worked best for my team on last mile delivery at Ford Motor Company. And we simply just used Figma for the whole development handoff process. I know previous teams I've been on, they used tools like Figma to Zeppelin or, or Sketch to Zeppelin or Sketch to Envision. Like there's no such thing as a wrong process, but I feel like the process I'm gonna show is the one that worked for best than it basically had the least overhead time and cost for developers and designers because it just doesn't um, require having multiple accounts keeping so much stuff in sync and it basically being the only design on this team at the time I don't want it to waste too much time on basically documentation and maintaining things on multiple platforms because your time is such a scarce resource so let's get started inside Figma to see this process so let's dive straight into Figma and check out this design to development process I'm always iterating and look to streamline. And the key thing straight away is we've got two projects here, a development project and a wireframes project. And the development project serves as that project where the production ready designs or designs that are ready to be worked on and shipped, they all live there. They're the master designs that are all good to go. and only the developers, the product managers and mar marketing guys uh, will have access to this project. Whereas a wireframes project is strictly for the designers that are working on concept stuff that isn't really ready to be worked on or be seen yet. And this is where you're just working on fast, quick wireframes, working on brand new features. So the way we first of all differentiate this and save ourselves time is by not using another tool like Zeppelin or Envision. We have a separate project inside Figma, a dedicated development project, and this already saved a lot of time and it works really well because of the permission levels and how easy it is really just to transfer from one Figma project to another. So let's dive into the wireframes project and see how that looks, and then we'll design look at the development. So let's head straight into the wireframes project and see how this looks and how it works. So like I mentioned, the wireframes project, it, the only designers really have access to this project. It makes it a lot easier to differentiate between the development and the wireframe so the developers don't get confused or product managers what's the latest work and what is being worked on. So in the wireframes project, first of all, you have all the features listed on this left hand side. So login screens is zero zero, scan parcels is a dedicated feature and it's zero two. And all the wireframes and different concepts you can see are being worked on are all down here. Wicked wild directions, it really doesn't matter what goes on here. It's just about iterating and having that place of just basically coming up with concepts. But then once you're more happy with your concepts inside this file, I'd create a little border. And at the top here is the designs that are ready to go to the development project. So these are inside the wireframes project, but these are designs I'm more happy with, I'm ready to ship to the development project and I'll name them. So the name would be the platform iOS and then the feature number here, 02 and then it would be the actual description of the screen. What does this actually serve? The reason it's named like this is because on user stories, it makes it easier for developers or product managers to reference a screen directly. So they'll be like, oh wait, I've got a question about iOS screen 2.2.0, bag information, like how comes this is structured this way, or why is a color like this? And this is a really important part of the development handoff process is by naming your screens. So in the wireframes project, like I said, all your wacky concepts go below this line here. And when you're ready 
and you're more happy with the designs, you've presented them to your engineers, your product managers, and they're, they're on board with them, the researchers are ready and they're happy, then they'll go at the top of this line and I'll just get ready to hand them off into development. And very similar on all of the pages really, you can see concepts at the bottom, the little border, and then once you're ready, you just put them at the top here, and then we'll go to the development screen. So let's dive into the development project now. So now we've had a look at what the wireframes project looks like, let's have a look at what the development project looks like. The project where only you give access to the developers, the designers, product managers, basically everyone has access to the development. It's the finished work, it's the go-to article ready for developers to ship and make it to production. So having a look at this project, you can see, first of all, the page names and the features are exactly the same as the wireframes. And this makes it so easy for developer handoff, like I mentioned earlier, by labeling the actual screens by the feature names and having a description. It makes it easier when you talk about user stories and you wanna basically critique an actual screen, you just reference the actual number and the description. So we can see here zero zero login screens it looks exactly the same as a wireframes, but it's the screens at the top because they're ready and they're ready to be handed off and worked on right now. And we can see there's nothing else in this file. It's literally just the finished article here. And it makes it really simple for you to differentiate between the two projects here. And all you need is for developers to sign up to Figma and have an account and they'll have access to these screens. And the great thing about Figma is you can just access it on your web browser as well. They don't have to install anything and that makes it so simple as well. A great thing about this as well is because here you can directly see the actual components that are being used. So you can see this is using the button component, or what textile is this actually being used here, what components are being used. It makes it even easier for the developers. Oh, what actual um, color is actually being used here. We can see directly and you can reference this from the design system. And this makes it e easy in Figma to do. In like other tools or programs, you might have to set this up. Whereas in Figma, it's just a copy and paste and it works straight away. You can see the component that's being used. So if you've already as a developer got that component um, developed, you know what one that you have to reference. So let's look at more complex screens where there's way more to hand off. And you can see here, it's very similar to the wireframes where we've got the latest designs at the top here, but you only see the latest and production ready designs. And you can see you can add comments as well. So the great thing about Figma is the whole documentation in a sense that it's easy for uh, developers to comment product managers if they have a question they can message you directly on slack but then they can message you uh, inside figma and you can make comments as well just so the developers know what's up and it's really easy to do like i said you just have to be inside your web browser to do this but more complex handoffs we can see here this is feature one here with the navigator van 1.0 at 1 because it's part of the same flow and you can see it's using components here and we can see what components are being used and what variants as well so it makes it super easy and we can see the comments here as well and it just really makes it so simple having these two projects copying and pasting between the projects the differentiation is really simple in figma and i recommend using this over having multiple tools paying for additional licenses it's one of the most streamlined flows that i feel like that works really well you can see here this is a totally different edge case and flow what happens with if they lose signal here and this is a dedicated flow for the developers they'll understand straight away back online temporary connection lost it's really simple for the developers to hand off and like i said i love the fact that you can use the design system and components and reference and and it makes that like qa process a tiny tiny bit easier because there's no easy fee getting the qa process down but even when it comes to more complex flows like this multiple parcel screens there's so many edge cases here like what happens if someone 
uh, it delivers a parcel and they're not in but then they answer the door quickly as you uh, leave what happens uh, when there's a collection there's multiple collections multiple deliveries so it it might be hard to document all of this maybe on Figma so why not use a prototype inside Figma so the next thing I'm going to show is using prototypes you don't need another tool you don't need Envision with Zeppelin you might have to have a Figma prototype and then your Zeppelin designs but at least inside Figma the prototypes are baked inside as well so that makes it simple so let's have a look at a prototype for a complex flow like multiple parcels so I usually kept my prototypes in the wireframes project and then shared the link to developers to make the handoff process a lot easier. So here you can see when I press play, it will head straight into the prototype and we're gonna list out all the different edge cases for this feature. Because like I said, it's a lot easier when there's um, so many edge cases to have a prototype just to talk through this for the developers instead of writing out everything you can have a prototype is another easier way to understand how some of the interaction designs work so we can see here we're looking at what happens if there's multiple deliveries at the same address the happy path and then it allows them to see oh what should this look like when i scroll down we can see the scan parcels is meant to be sticky here and you, you can see that this is all grayed out. But then when I press scan parcel, what is a flow? Does the scanner like close by itself or does the user have to close it? And we can see here that the user has to close the scanner and it makes it easy for the development handoff to, to, so that you can explain things and then they'll click on the prototype to get an idea of how it's meant to work, some of the interactions. And then we can see, oh, what does this state look like when they're all scanned? How does this look? And then now we can see here, this has turned to an active state. So what does that look like? It's very easy for the developers to see. So it's just great to really have a prototype baked in. So it makes it even easier. You don't have to use another tool like Envision or Zeppelin. By using Figma, it's, you can just put the link straight into for your developers to use. It's all baked in and it's so much easier to use. And that basically just showed that complex interaction with a prototype. It made it so much easier for me to explain. And like I said, there's all of these different edge cases. What happens if there's multiple collections and there's a failure? What happens if the barcode won't scan? How does this all work? And the developers will basically be able to go in and then understand how does this actual feature work if the barcode doesn't scan what does this look like oh it says unable to find a parcel so maybe they have to like type it in manually what does that process look like and here it makes it easy for me just to basically show this process of what it all looks like using prototypes so the last one i'm going to talk about is naming layers when it comes to development handoff and I guess like it does add a lot of extra time by naming all of your layers, but it's something I appreciate when someone hands off a file to me with a layers named. But like I said, it's not too big of an issue, but we can see here that because you're using components, they will come up pretty fine. But then we can see the rectangles here are named the, the images and it does make it a tiny, tiny bit easier. Um, and I guess it's just nice, it's a nice to have, it's not essential. And you can see even the screens here are organized by the numbers, so it makes it easy to refer to. But again, I don't think personally it's essential, it's something that I like to do if I've got time on my hands, but if I'm like really cut and short on time, I don't think it's essential to name every single layer. Now looking back, one thing I'd like to improve with my design to development handoff process in this remote first environment is leverage and use more video clips and record videos to basically hand off my design rationale and documenting the designs. So it makes it easier for people to work asynchronously in different time zones if they've missed the development handoff meeting or there isn't enough time to for a meeting I can quickly record a clip and send this across and a tool like Loom works really well for this recording literally a couple of minutes uh, for a video to explain your rationale and it makes it easier for future developers or past designers that want to catch up or future designers on the team to understand the rationale and it makes it easier than reading documentation I feel personally and that's something I'll do next time and I'm looking to implement in my new workflow to level up my documentation process 
vid videos don't work for you, maybe try voice notes, but it's definitely something that I feel like can elevate and take your documentation, design to development, engineering handoff process to the next level. Thank you so much for watching this video and making it to the end of the video. Hopefully you learned something new and you can get some inspiration for your design to engineering slash development handoff process and you can implement something new for your team. Like I said, there's no such thing as a one size fits all perfect development handoff process. It's about getting something that works for your team, getting inspiration from different teams and different creators. So hopefully you learned something new. So be sure to subscribe for future design related videos and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.